Tyrese Halliburton is an interesting player. It's not just the jump shot mechanics, but it's how he gets downhill. It's the finishes around the rim, how he delivers passes. So I'm going to break all this down from his court vision, which I'm also going to test you guys on, to his jumper, to how he attacks and finishes at the rim. Let's get into it. So in terms of court vision for the first few, let's do this. I'm going to show you a play, freeze it, and you can test yourself decision making wise. Let's go. All right, now that you've tested yourself, now that you see how well he analyzes the defense, really in a split second, let's start to break these down. So number one, he sees over the defense. He's definitely a taller guard, plays at a pretty high level, so he's able to see things down the court that most smaller guards just don't see. And on top of this, he also uses his height to his advantage by releasing that ball over the defense. So sometimes he can do this while he's on the ground, but oftentimes he'll do this with jump passes. And I know a lot of coaches hate this and I see why, but as a taller guard, when he already knows where his pass is going, this can be a great option to get up in the air and even release it overhead if you're strong enough. He also uses bounce passes really well to get through these outstretched hands of defenders. Especially in the NBA where players are crazy tall and it's tougher to get down there to that level, this is a crafty way to get passes through. If you look at where most players reach for that pass, it's where a straight line pass would be. So going to the ground most times is going to get through to that teammate. And even around the paint in close quarters with his teammates, he'll make this dump off pass to bigs because it gives them more time for the big to catch it. It's not coming straight to them, so they have a bit more time to read where that pass is going and catch it. He's also really good at employing different techniques to get power on passes. Now this can be really winding up for a one hand pass. This can actually be using a negative step here. So you see he's kind of in a weird place. This would be a pretty weak pass if he threw it from here, but he takes a step back almost like he would on an acceleration to get some power into that pass. So you'll notice how much mustard he gets on some of these passes, so to speak. And this is very valuable, especially when accurate, to get these passes through defenses. In transition, he's an amazing creator too. And he's effortlessly fast. What I mean by this is that he's moving at a super high speed here, but he's not devoting all of his effort to it. It's effortless and his attention or effort can go towards finding a good place to go with the ball, not just putting his foot on the gas pedal and using all of his attention to go fast. You also notice that at slower speeds, tacking downhill, he uses this little float to buy time to make a decision. In other words, the ball is kind of floating in his hand here. He's reading that defense subconsciously, and then off of that float, he can make a dime. And then lastly, building off of this, he's really good at adjusting his pass last second. This is such a split second decision, it's definitely not something that he consciously thinks about, but being able to audible out of a pass at the last millisecond to get a better option is a great skill to have. All right, next, his jump shot. You hear a lot about his form and how unorthodox it is. And it is. He's definitely one of those players who doesn't have the quote unquote perfect jumper, but he's making it work pretty damn well. A few things I notice here. Number one, that shot point is typically a bit further away from the body. So instead of keeping it closer to his head or his face, it's kind of stretched out. Not a bad thing, just something I noticed. Number two, the ball starts going up very early in the shooting process. So it kind of gets to that set point. And then it's kind of a push from there as his legs sink up to finish the shot all at once. But the ball doesn't stop at all. Yes, he's a taller player, clearly a strong dude. This shows you that you don't need insane amounts of power on the shot when you sync up everything to work together. He's literally just getting a quick push from that set point and he's shooting it more effortlessly than a lot of players who go through that full range of motion with power. Now what bringing this ball up early in the process also does is it allows him to get his shot off super quickly off the dribble. Like right here, the ball is already kind of coming up towards that set point and his feet aren't anywhere near fully set. So by the time he does get his feet set, the ball is already ready for takeoff and he just needs that quick pop into the air. Then the third thing I noticed here is that when he starts to speed up his shot to get it off faster, it starts to look a bit more like your standard one motion shot. And here's the thing, when you're able to maintain some of the most important qualities, the arc, the energy transfer to get effortless power, shooting straight, how you make that happen doesn't really matter as much. Technique isn't crazy important as long as you're getting the results that you want. So for somebody like Halliburton, yes, he may not have the most pretty jumper, so to speak, 
but all of these things are present. Obviously, I'm not encouraging you to shoot with poor technique, but more so empowering you to give up the perfectionism of your jumper, because in reality, no jumper will ever be perfect. Different players have different ideal techniques. For example, Halliburton's guide arm, the left, comes up a little bit higher than most people's would. So it looks a bit strange, but does it affect his shot? No, so why correct it? It's probably just because he has very long arms, and this is how he gets his guide hand in the right position. You may have shorter arms, so you don't need to do this. This is just an example of individual constraints. Anyways, I'll leave that whole talk to technique about another video I posted. He's also the perfect example of somebody whose midi jumper is far different from their three. His mid-range jumpers look a lot more traditional, with the higher release that's closer to his body, and this makes sense considering that he's jumping higher and probably needs to get a bit more power because he's shooting from closer to the top of his jump. And then lastly, let's dive into how he gets to the rim and then how he finishes once he gets there. So most of the time you can tell a good accelerator when their shin angles are prepared in a forward-oriented position, even when they're somewhat relaxed or not in that driving position just yet. This way, when a guy like Halliburton does want to explode past, he doesn't have to spend time dropping into this angle to project himself forward. He's already at least halfway there. Now his crossovers here are definitely a go-to, and this is partly because it allows him to use his length to get outside of his body with the ball, but also to cover more ground laterally, which helps him get that defender sliding over to the side, and thus more vulnerable to the cross back. And it's not just on the setup where he gets super lateral. Even on this cross step after the cross, he's going really far across his body to get this angle on the defender. There are a lot of physical qualities that go into this, but this takes an unbelievable amount of stiffness and mobility at his ankles. And it's also interesting to see that when he moves laterally a lot of times on these crossovers, he's almost moving backwards at times, or at least his feet are. And to me, this seems like he's subconsciously getting himself in a nice position to project them forward, or in other words, just another mechanism to get himself into a good position to explode from. Now, once he gets going towards the lane, one thing I notice here is that his touch shots from outside of that lane are crazy. He realized that a lot of the time it's not worth going in and attacking a shot blocking big. Might as well just keep that momentum going, stay outside of that lane, and finish with not necessarily a floater, but just some type of touch shot. And this is definitely something it seems like he's worked on, because these are tough shots. Keeping your momentum moving away from the basket and still being able to put it up off the glass, this ain't easy. What I also notice is that he's able to shoot these floaters or runners with his momentum moving in a ton of different directions. Sometimes he may get bumped, he may be falling backwards, he may be moving to the side. It really doesn't matter, and this allows him to shoot in congested environments around that paint. Also, he's really good at rotating, switching hands, and just adjusting in midair, specifically off one foot jumps. This is huge because he's often attacking from further out or in transition, where these one foot high speed finishes become more important and he has less time to adjust before getting up into the air. So a lot of the work has to be done in midair. So hopefully you guys learned something from this video. I know not many guards are crazy tall and athletic like he is, but there are a lot of things here that you can add to your own game, or at least in terms of the jump shot that you can take a perspective from, or from a court vision standpoint, different ways that you can notice patterns in the game and make those passes like him. As always, make sure to follow me on Instagram at Binding Means Basketball for a lot more like this, and stay tuned. I'm gonna keep it real, I use DoorDash way too much to save time, which is why we've now partnered with DoorDash to make sure that you get on the wave as well. For a limited time, our viewers can get 50% off up to a $20 value and $0 delivery fees when you download the DoorDash app and enter code by any means. Don't forget, that's code by any means for 50% off up to a $20 value and $0 delivery fees with DoorDash. That's 50% off up to a $20 value and $0 delivery fees when you download the DoorDash app in the App Store and enter code by any means. Subject to change, terms apply.